So Sandy, we've just been doing a session on the innovative uh, innovation ecosystem. Could you tell me what innovation means to you? Innovation to me, I think I love the I love it. The pithy comment is great ideas applied. To me, that means uh, uh, ideas for commercial benefit or societal benefit. Right. So you take a new idea and then you change things a bit and make something better. Is that that? Well, there's there's two there's there's sort of moonshot you know leap forward innovation, but there's also iterative process driven uh, innovation. Both can be very very powerful, uh, but they tend to require different sort of levels of capital capital and uh, and I guess you know just. Uh, uh, big bold ideas. So Australia, both sides of politics right now and the election we're going through have made a big deal out of innovation. How are we doing right now in your opinion? I think that it's great that both sides of politics are making a big deal out of innovation because it's only been a very recent uh, phenomenon in Australia, in Australian political discourse where you put something like innovation and innovation related policy at the centre, or as a linchpin, of, of, a linchpin of, uh, of further economic uh, policy for the nation, so it's really been the first time that's happened. So the conversation has started, and that's an important change for Australia. I think what we're all anxious to see is how that conversation starts to deepen into detail uh, and action, and how industry adopts sort of a, a action and activity and innovation uh, in the innovation enterprise moving forward. So uh, Australia, I would say, I guess from our, our discussion, seems to have a I would developing ecosystem. And one of the hearts of the developing ecosystem is having managers who sort of get how this system works well, of which I would say we don't have as many as some of our competitor nations. And so you talked about the concept of a 21st century manager. What is that? Yes, um, I mean, again, you could be very specific and go into detail and study it forever, but it, to me, I think broadly speaking, it means um, globally and regionally aware. You know, having leadership uh, that is, regardless of uh, a background and skills, that is, that is absolutely aware of the competitive situation uh, of structural trends and, com and competition globally and regionally. So that's the first thing. I think it's also uh, uh, 21st century management capability is very aware of diversity and the value of diversity, not just in gender and ethnicity, but also in skill sets. So law, accounting, but also quantum physics and also um, uh, the arts, you know, creative, critical thinking of every kind. Uh, a 21st century uh, manager would also be uh, not seeking so much conformity or hierarchical sort of process. It would want flatter structures and it would want a, a little bit of friction, a little bit of back and forth. So I think they're the key, the key uh, parts of 21st century management. So what do you see that Australia can learn from, from other countries like Israel or the United States? Or is it just really different here and we're going to have to find our own way? I think both. I mean, I think we, we can always learn from uh, other countries, just as we can. I think we can al always learn from other uh, sectors and industries uh, in, in, in other disciplines in Australia. Um, in fact, in Australia, I think, you know, even looking at the mining sector, I mean, we want to transition to a more diverse economy, but, but in fact, the mining industry in Australia has, in fact, reached global scale, uh, and it has several companies that are, that are globally the best in the world, and it has its own ecosystem that has been very, very successful. So even in mining, we can actually look at mining and some, some success. As far as Israel and the US and in even, you know, uh, 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 Korea, uh, parts of you know China, what China is doing, we can all learn by that. Each of them have had different roles uh, of the key components of an ecosystem. I mean, Silicon Valley has probably got the most well-oiled and most experienced of all of them, from big government contracts, policy, risk-taking, venture capital, all of that. Israel's had been a master at utilizing uh, what they've got in terms of skills, immigration, but also consistency of government policy uh, over, over several decades. Um, I think Australia is trying to work that out right now. And I think that the, there's stuff that we can learn from, from multiple quarters. The, but superimposing one for here will probably result in, uh, in tears. We need to find our own way. 
So the poster child right now in Australia for innovation is Atlassian. Yes. So do you see that as the beginning of many good things to come or do you see it as sort of being the exception to the rule? Atlassian to me is certainly a standout uh, company. Uh, the two founders, Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar, I, I mean, I, I, I think they are, they, they have a particular blend of uh, of, of risk, uh, boldness, tech savvy, and business savvy. Uh, that 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 is really that that sort of really lovely mix. Um, and so, in in some ways, it's a standout. It's certainly an exception in that particular class of publicly listed company in Australia. That doesn't mean it has to remain the only the only one. And indeed, um, you know, in other in other areas of endeavor in Australia before um, Atlassian in the in the software enterprise software uh, world, we've had standouts before Cochlear, ResMed. So I think it's really, really important that we actually identify these standouts in multiple sectors, in multiple specialties, have a real look at what makes them different. Um, what makes them globally successful, and then see what that can teach us a, a, a whole heap of aspirant companies that, can, that want to move up.